All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR here. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my impressions for Bleeding Edge. So I'm gonna give you some general information first and then give you my impressions, uh, you know, and how I feel about the game and the, what I think the pros and the cons are. So Bleeding Edge is a game developed by Ninja Theory. It's like a side project that they've been working on for a few years. It's a 4v4 team-based hero brawler. Uh, it's on Steam and Xbox Game Pass and everything like that. Um, I got it on Steam because it's just, just I'm just not for Xbox Game Pass. I just really try to avoid getting games off of uh, subscription services. I just kind of avoid that. So I never got to play Bleeding Edge uh, uh, the beta. You know, I was away. I wasn't home during that time when they had the beta. I wish they would have had another one, but I never got to play. So this was my opportunity to play the game, right? I at least wanted to play the game to, to you know, know how I actually felt about it because I'm just not one of those people who are sheep. And just because a uh, majority or a, a great number of people say a game is good, I don't believe them just because they say it's good. And the same thing goes for if a whole bunch of the, the majority seem to say a game is bad. I play it for myself and I don't care what nobody else thinks. I just say how I feel, right? So let's get into the comparison. So a lot of people compare this game, rightfully so, to games like uh, the, the most direct comparison is usually Overwatch because people consider Overwatch to be the best in the, the best game in the hero genre. That's generally what's believed. And if, in case anybody who doesn't know my opinion on Overwatch, I think Overwatch is extremely boring. And I'm not just saying that now. I said that back when the game first came out and the internet destroyed me for it. Now it's funny because especially the people I hang out with, they all seem to say, you know, Overwatch is extremely boring and it's trash and all this stuff. I don't, but I was the only one back then when Overwatch came out, like saying it. And I remember getting destroyed for it and nobody having my back, by the way. But I just wanted to put that out there. I've always felt this way about, you know, about that way about Overwatch. I'm not just like a a, a reverse hype beast that, you know, is revising how I how I feel. I never liked the game. Always thought it was extremely boring, right? But I've enjoyed other games in the genre. I've enjoyed even Paladins, uh, Heroes of the Storm, Dirty Bomb. There was a another Microsoft game that never came out of early access that was canceled that was in the same genre. I even liked that. So I've liked games in this genre. I just definitely never liked Overwatch. Just a little background. So now to get into a little bit of detail about the game. So there are four maps, I believe, or at least I only got to play on four maps. There might be... Uh, more than that, right? But I played on four maps. There's two modes, objective control and power collection. Uh, there's 11 characters, I believe, five assault, um, three supports and three tank characters. Uh, some with range and physical attacks. There's, a, you know, there's a mixture. Um, all the characters have a hoverboard. The hoverboard is just to move around the map uh, more freely. Uh, if you, if you, you know, if you need to, obviously not in combat, you can't use the hoverboard in combat. The two characters that I really enjoyed, um, using, and, uh, I pretty much decided that the main character that I will be using for however I, however long I turn out to play this game is Kulev. Kulev is a, is a support character. Uh, just a t and I also like Bastardo. Bastardo is a is w is one of the tanks in the game. So those are the two characters that I really like. But I mainly have been using Kulev the few hours I've been playing this game. His moves are Sacred Sacred Ground. That's an area of effectability that damages enemies and and heal allies that are inside of it. So that's 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 pretty. I thought that was pretty cool. Usually with characters like that. It's usually one or the other. They usually have like a like a healing healing spear or a damage spear. His is both. Uh, he has good omen, which allows you to shield an ally or shield yourself. Uh, curse, uh, which is a it, it targets um, uh, wh whatever enemy you curse. Uh, all damage uh, it takes damage from all all sources, uh, and it ha and all the heroes have uh, two specials that you have. To, you can only choose one. Um, which, which one that you're gonna use in the game. Uh, Kulev's is Bamboozle and uh, Boon. So Boon, you get to buff an ally with bonus damage, speed, and defense. Bamboozle, you get to actually control 
uh someone on the enemy team and he has this basic attack with the with the x button where he just shoots acid all the characters have an, an evade ability um and also a parry ability the, all of them also uh, move at different speeds. Obviously, uh, a tank typically isn't going to go uh, as fast as uh, some of the more agile and, and quick, uh, you know, assault characters such as the uh, the samurai. I for, forgot his name. I think it's Damon. Um, as far as going to going into like mods and aesthetics, so mods are pretty much buffs that you can use um, on your character. Uh, it's it's pretty much a part of your loadout before you get into the game so you can choose what mods you you want um, Which which like I said perform as buffs and you can purchase more mods uh, with the in-game currency There's also a, a cause there's also cosmetics you can buy in the game which use a different in-game currency But I also think you can use uh, actual money to buy those cosmetic those co those cause cosmetics, uh, but you can't use actual money to buy any um, you know in game mods or anything like that because of course that would make it like a a pay to win type thing. The cosmetics are a little bit lazy in design because I was checking them out and like if you want to buy a different skin for example, pretty much like they all, all the skins are is like a change of color. If your character has a cape, it just changes it from a, like a purple to like a blue cape. So it's very like lazy, uh, lazy uh, cos cosmetic changes. As I said already, this game is a team-based brawler and you ha really have to emphasize team-based because lone wolfing it does not work in this game typically. Uh, that doesn't really matter if you're a uh, if you're one of the classes that defeats the other classes. There are still situations where uh, a support can beat a tank. Typically, going one on one, uh, that's you know a support is isn't always going to beat a tank. But there are situations where it is it is possible if the you know depending on how you know that player may be playing against the tank uh, if it has ranged attacks. But typically. You don't want to lone wolf it because you are not winning a one verse two, at least not against characters with that have some that both have like at least half their HP. Yeah, you're not going to win that fight. You're going to you're you're going to lose that fight. So you need to be at least in pairs. Uh, typically, uh, you would want like an assault character with a support class or a tank with a support with a support class. Lone wolfing it does not work. You will get destroyed and you know you won't be able to run away typically even with the, some of the faster characters in the game it's going to be very difficult right so you really have to work as a team synergy team composition and team setup are really important so let me get to the what i think the pros and the cons are in this game let me start with the cons the cons are that this game is way too slow just overall everything in the game is too slow the movement the attacks the game itself is too slow the next thing is which you know ties into the game being too slow it currently has a low competitive ceiling which can be fixed and can be improved if they want to stick with the game and to con and continue to support it. I don't know if they plan to do that. Ninja Theory is working on multiple projects, as we know. This could be a game that they, you know, wanted to put out as a as their quote unquote passion pro uh, project and maybe su support it for a long time. As we know, there's de developers like Ubisoft. It doesn't matter how successful or not success successful a multiplayer game is. They support it for years um, uh, and, and some of their games fall flat at first, but then they continue to support it and it continues to be a success like, you know, Rainbow Six Siege or For or for Honor, right? I don't know if they plan to support this game five years down the line with content and, and improvements. If they do intend to do that, then they can raise the, the, the competitive ceiling on this game because it is a pretty basic and, and surface level level game, right? Um, it's, it's one of those games, it, it's, it's easy to get into. It doesn't take, I wouldn't say it takes a long time to master because there is no high ceiling, right? I mean, there's lock on, you don't have to actually manually aim. That makes it, um, that adds to the casual factor of it that you don't have to aim. So there's no benefit. I'm playing on PC, by the way, if I didn't mention. So there's no real benefit to using mouse and keyboard. It actually 
is very practical it makes more sense for you to just use a controller um you know the 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 abilities have cooldowns of course if i didn't if i didn't mention that but to improve the 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 competitive ceiling of the game they're gonna have to add a lot of those things uh because for example as i mentioned each character has specials right um and you have to choose one special for the game in order to just in, improve the dynamics and the depth of this game because like i said it's very basic you're gonna have to add a lot more mods and add more um abilities so that the so that there can be different play styles even among each character so not every cool lev is gonna play the same because depending on what mods and what what abilities they're using that that would add a lot of depth uh to the game so they're gonna have to add more abilities more mods more specials you know that will help with the meta of the game they're gonna have to improve the maps the maps are pretty damn generic there's nothing like unique or you know um special about these maps or anything like that uh nothing that really stands out about them uh and, and this game just doesn't do anything necessarily unique or special uh it doesn't do anything the best compared to other established games in the genre it doesn't do anything drastically better to separate itself other than i guess focusing on melee and being a brawler that's that's you know it just doesn't do any it doesn't do anything uh it's kind of like a it's not a master of of anything as far as i've played um i don't i don't even know if you could say it, the game is like a jack of all trades it, it just does everything okay it's 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 basic you could say it's mid i would say it's like maybe high mid but it's definitely still mid but i don't think the game is bad whatsoever and some people were you know butthurt about that but the pros and there's not that many pros as i said there's not like there's not any i don't think there's enough cons in this game to render it absolute trash but i don't think there's, a, there's enough pros to to say that it's absolute trash either right um, I don't think there's enough pros to say that it, that is great or anything like that. Excuse me, because uh, the pros are really that the combat is okay and the the abilities. I think the abilities and the and the character designs are probably the best thing in the game. I don't. I think the character designs are good. I think the abilities are good. The animations are and and the visuals are good. And I like how vibrant it is. And you know there are definitely fun aspects to this game. Um, especially when you, especially when you team up and playing with randoms doesn't really seem to pay off. You're, you're going to lose the majority of the time playing with randoms, unless you, you know, you get the luck of the draw and actually get a random, a good bunch of randoms on your team. And, uh, people are playing the objective and, you know, that's hard to sometimes always, uh, always get people to play the objective and everything like that. So the game is $30. Um, I think that's the right price for it. I'm not saying it's worth $30. That's of course objective to uh, subjective to whoever is playing it. It's definitely not like a $60 thing. Um, so I think they they knew what they were doing when they priced this for uh, $30. I think over time, if they add content, this could the, the price of the game, which which is 30. Um, the game itself could outgrow that price, but that they have to can, can continue to support it. And, you know, that's how I feel about the game. Of course, like I said, there were people that were butthurt. I was live streaming and there were people that were butthurt that I was even playing the game. I'm like, why are you mad that I'm playing a game? How am I supposed to know if, if how I feel about the game if I don't play it? Like I said, I never got to play the beta. So how the hell am I supposed to know? I'm sorry, I'm not one of you sheep who just looks at a game and says it's trash. I may look at a game and say that game doesn't look very good, but I need to play it. And that's literally what I've said since they've shown the trade, the first trailer of uh, Bleeding Edge is I said, this game doesn't look very good, but I at least need to play it. But you know, people get, seem to get butt hurt that you're even uh, playing a game and not writing it off without even experiencing it. I, I I don't get it, but uh, okay. There were even people so mad and saying, you're not gonna be playing this game after a week. I'm like, uh, okay. I don't know where I said I was going to. I don't know where I praised the game to any amount that would lead you to believe that I was implying that I was playing this game after a week. But I should know this is the internet and everybody is trying to feel down and cool and you know 
if saying a game is absolute trash gets you a seat at that imaginary cool kids lunch table, then that's what people are gonna do because people are sheep. But uh, I digress. So that's my impressions for Bleeding Edge. I think it has potential, but I think it needs long-term support and some major adjustments. And I think it's just an okay, it's an okay game. I would say uh, a, a high mid game, you know, if you will, maybe a 6.5 uh, at best, at a best, at best a seven. Most likely not something I'll be with long term, but definitely gonna, you know, enjoy and get what I can out of it for the moment. So yeah, let me know what y'all think about this. I'm out of here. Peace.